Hey, hello there. This is the Salon Doctor talking to you today about unemployment comp claims. We've been getting a lot more of them. I'm getting calls on that quite a bit uh, often, <clears throat> and it's because of what's happened to our workforce. Um, it's an impulsive, kind of flaky workforce at times. And so when they quit, typically you don't have to pay unemployment claims, but I'll show you an exception to that. But so what we're here today is talk about how that you fight those unemployment claims when they come across your desk. So um, I'm John Farr. I've been doing this tanning thing for 32 years, and I've been doing the HR thing for 54 years. It says that in both counts, I'm old. All right, so let's talk about case study. This is a case study I wanted to talk about. Defending your business from unemployment comp claims. And this, of course, is assuming non-government mandated compensations. We're not talking about COVID payments or that kind of thing. So what's going on is employee turnover from the cold quitting aspect is at an all-time peak. We've got people, oh, I think I want to be a barista today. Oh, I'll go work at Tannix on tomorrow. Maybe I'll go work at Amazon. Maybe I'll work in a warehouse. Uh, maybe I'll go stay at home for a while, whatever. It sounds like I'm doing an indictment on the entire younger generation, and to some extent, there's part of it I am doing kind of an indictment on. But anyway, the, the point is employee turnover from quitting is really important. And you're saying, well, John, what do I care about quitting? I don't have to pay unemployment claims if they quit. Well, we'll get into that in a second because that's not necessarily the case. You can. Um, have some problems with that. Now, as you know, that most states are at will states. So you say, what is the risk? Employees can quit at will and we can fire them at will. Well, even quitting sometimes can cause a claim. We call it constructive discharge. And it's when an environment is so antagonistic toward the employee that they would argue with the unemployment officer, I had no choice. There was so much harassment on me. Or maybe it's they think the employee, employer is doing something illegal. That's constructive discharge, but that's a whole different thing, and we're not talking really about that today. So the question is, how do I defend a claim, defend a claim when I'm term, terminated an employee? And how do I appeal an unemployment claim? Because sometimes uh, the termination you know, takes place, and, and we've got, we have a whole generation now that was used to filing unemployment during COVID. So the unemployment claims from firing employees is going up. And we tend to be firing more employees now because they're flaky. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And it's unfortunately the whole COVID thing did a lot of damage to work ethics. So, but let's talk about what I would say the best way to defend the original claim. So. When you get a claim, it usually starts with a notice from the state's wage and hour or labor division. So you want to stay cool, review it objectively. What caused you to terminate the employee? You want to think about this. What was what were my reasons for firing this employee? And you maybe had very good reasons. You know, there's I don't I don't think most employers, most salon owners come into the salon one day and decide that, geez, I don't like the way you comb your hair and you're out of here. I mean, right now we're having a tough time finding people. So that's usually not the case. But um, you want to gather any paperwork you have concerning the information or the termination. When people call me, and this is this case study I'm going to talk about today, when they call me and they say, ah, I've got this unemployment claim that came from the wage and hour division of the state here, and what do I do about this? And the first thing I say is, all right, gather any paperwork. If you have paperwork, any notes, doesn't have to be official forms. It could be on the back of a card that you wrote down today on 816, uh, showed up late again for work and you date it and whatever. We'll get into that in a bit here. Okay, but don't leave out any details. And then call me. Um, I, I look at I am not an attorney. My MBA is in human resource management, but I've handled hundreds of these situations. Matter of fact, I think I probably know how to handle this as well as any member of the bar, but I'm not an attorney, but I handle this stuff for clients all the time. Okay, so the following is a specific case study for a salon owner in South Carolina. 
uh, I won't tell you her name or the salon. Uh, I wanted to have her talk on this live on this um, on this webinar, but you know sometimes people they're a little embarrassed. They either don't like to talk, you know, on a webinar, or they don't want to admit that they had this problem. That's fine. That's cool. She's a nice lady, and um, um, she's been a good client. So we just let it go with that. Okay, so here's what happened in this case study. The owner dismissed her manager because of some disparaging conversations that manager had about the owner with one of the salon's customers via text and Facebook. Well, if you're the owner and a customer comes to you and says, look at what your manager is saying about you, that would pretty much honk off anybody. And so um, she decided that she called me, we talked, and I said, that's uh, gross insubordination. One of the things that she specifically said, oh, you'll like this, is that she said she was so upset with the owner, she told the customer, she was so upset with the owner that she was gonna go on Facebook and tell all the customers at the salon to cancel their packages before their EFT payments went through that month. Can you imagine? That's what she did. <clears throat> so I think we call that insubordination. Well, of course, she didn't realize, but the customer forwarded those messages to the owner. Bad news. Okay, so there were many reasons other than that why the owner wanted to get rid of wanted to get rid of the manager, such as too many call offs, insubordination in general, which is an, this is an example, poor direction of other employees, poor follow through on owner's directions, all of these things that. Um, make you wanna pull your hair out, especially when you've got a manager. And this manager had been with her for three or four years. Now the problem was that she'd had these problems over the last two years and they weren't getting any better. And this is a problem that we create in the salon business. And I realize we have a problem finding good help right now. I realize that as well as anybody, but we tend to hire too fast and we fire too slow fire too fast hey is your heart beating can you start tonight and we fire too slow oh well she was in support and talked back to me in front of customers but uh i'll look past that for right now because i've got nobody cover the shift but that's what happens is that when we don't deal with performance issues they don't get better by themselves so anyway so this is the kinds of problems that she was having in addition to the fact that the manager was saying nasty things about her to customers and threatening to cancel a lot of the EFT business. Here's what she did though. Uh, my client chose to use only the messages forwarded to her about from the customer during the live hearing. So there was a live hearing uh, that took place and she only wanted to use those because frankly, she didn't have her paperwork together. She didn't have a list of all those other issues you see above there, the call loss, the insubordination. She didn't have that documented. She decided, and I had I had pushed her to do that, but she decided, no, we're gonna do just what the manager said to the customer. And frankly, I agreed at the time. I thought, you know, this should be pretty good. I think the hearing officer would cancel the unemployment claim just by showing that. But technically she was not ready for the hearing and with other the other performance details. Okay, now here's some other things that went wrong for her. She had an outdated handbook. So if you don't have a handbook, I have, I've created hundreds of handbooks for hundreds of salons over the years. I have a hand handbook template that's really good. I would customize it to your salon, whatever, because everybody does things a little bit differently. But the handbook sets out the policies, the employment policies, practices and rules for the salon. You need to have one. Don't have a handbook for your tanning salon, get one and have employees sign and at the back of a handbook, we have an acknowledgements page where the employee has to sign and says, I understand the policies, rules um, of uh, XYZ salon, whatever. Now, um, my client had a handbook, but she didn't have anybody sign the acknowledgements page. So when we went to the hearing, I couldn't use that um, that the manager had violated the handbook policies. So that's one thing you, you learn, you gotta have a handbook. Uh, there was no employee agreements to the rules. Um, 
which when you don't have an appearance of agreement to the rules, that weakens your case with the hearing officer. The hearing officer will have a tendency to look at you as running your business, your single salon, because my client was a single salon, as running it kind of loosey-goosey. We also have to remember that most hearing officers, they're all hearing officers, are employees of the state. Not to take nothing wrong with working for the state, but they have a tendency to think that the uh, owner of the salon is a gazillionaire and the employee, the poor employee, is being um, fired impulsively and without cause, whatever. So a lot of times you go into a hearing, there's probably a prejudice there already against the owner. But if you got your paperwork together and you got your act all tuned up, it's uh, something that you should win. I have never in um, probably 15, 20 years been doing unemployment hearings. I've never lost a hearing. I've never lost a case, I should say. Okay, um, so no employee agreements that the, the officer could look at. He should have asked the customer, that gave her those nasty messages about what her manager said. She should have asked her to testify on the hearing. Well. The customer may have refused anyway because, but it's at least worth asking if the customer would have gotten on that live hearing as a live witness to what the manager said, probably been over and done with. This case would not have gone on. Okay, so two weeks later, the owner heard in writing from the state that it ruled in favor of the termed employee, which produced an appeal phone hearing. Okay, so. The owner did not prepare a list of managers' poor performance, just the manager's comments made to the customer. Once again, the state ruled in favor of the termed employee. The owner had to pay the ex-employee $3,500 in back wages and additional compensation going forward. Now, here's the thing um, for most people. You get, you get rid of an employee that's a pain in the neck. Um, and... <laughs> It's, it's a real pain in the neck. They file an unemployment claim, and it's hard to stay emotionless about getting ready for this. And so what happens is that people will call me, and I'll calm them down. Let's get to the facts, and let's get ready for a response in writing or for the hearing or whatever. So, But this is what they did. They ruled in favor of the term employee. Now, after the shock, we filed an appeal with the state of South Carolina. This is where it took place. And an in-person appeal conference was scheduled. This time, my client was prepared. I pushed her to put together the performance issues and not focus on the personal stuff. Because the last time when she complained to the, the hearing office, hearing officer, the hearing officer thought, that this was just because we're talking nasty things about each other, this was personal and it was not business. But this time she had a calendar timeline that I had her include all the dates of policy infractions and work performance issues, and that also made a huge difference. That became believable details for the hearing officer. Two weeks later, the hearing officer changed his ruling, this time against the term employee, saving the salon those $3,500 back wages plus future wages. So it came out good, but you sometimes have to learn things the hard way. Conclusion, protect your salon from bad employees. You terminate who try to file for an employment and win a judgment because you don't have an HR admin act together. Number two, if you don't have a handbook for your tanning salon, you need to get one and have employees sign on a form that says they understand the salon employment rules, policy and rules. And also, most important, have notes of performance issues in confidential in a confidential employee file that includes the date and the time of infractions. Now, that sounds like it's a lot of work, but I can tell you, it helps you to not only protect yourself against an employment claim, but it also helps you when you want to write up a performance review on the employee, because now you've got these notes in there. Some of them are good and some of them aren't so good, but when employees start bugging you for, for more money and they want to come to you and say, well, I listen, I want to raise, I want to get $17 an hour. Glad you asked me about that. Uh, let's sit down and talk here for a moment because 
I want to chat with you about things that I think have gone well and other things that maybe haven't gone so well. So, you know, we always think it's a negative when an employee bugs you for a raise. Sometimes it's good because it's an opportunity to sit down and finally go over their performance. And that doesn't mean that you don't give them a raise depending upon the infractions that are in the in the file. But uh, you can say them, tell you what, you got some things in here that you need to clear up. Um, let's take a look at it in 60 days. In 60 days, if I don't see any more of these issues, I'll give you X more, whatever. Uh, and it's arbitrary depending upon what you feel is fair. I have all kinds of suggestions on that as well. So if these being prepared helps for these uh, unemployment hearings. It also helps for your performance reviews. So I'm going to suggest this to you now. This is the heat of the summer. It's third quarter. But it's time to get ready for fourth quarter and peak 2023. If you looked at my last webinar, which was about a week ago, which has already had, I think, a couple hundred people looking at it, you really want to start thinking about fourth quarter and peak of 2023. Third quarter is always bad. I have people call me all the time off the forums and whatever saying, is anybody doing any business in third quarter? Well, if you're not doing business in third quarter, it's because the inflate, excuse me, the inflation has taken the consumer confidence away from people. But also, typically, even if we're having a good year, third quarter sucks. It usually is not real good. It's hot outside. People aren't thinking about tanning. Um, with You put inflation in there and it makes it even worse. Okay, so who am I? I am the number one industry salon analyst. I have been analyzing numbers, salon operations, HR, and marketing for years. So I have consulted and guided over 600 retail indoor tanning companies, uh, up to 200 locations, profits. I say two and a half million. They're probably uh, way over that by now. I got to redo it someday. Anyway, so my MBA is in human resource management. I said I'm not an attorney, but I've done a lot of these unemployment claims and I have a BA in marketing. So you need help, free consultation, can't get better than free. Now, does it mean that you won't go on and maybe buy my services? It's gonna be completely up to you. I will analyze your business and I'll give you a recommendation. And you may say, oh, this is stuff I haven't done before. And then you might be foolish. I mean, you might be smart enough to hire my services. So there you see my email address. You can go and sign up for a free consultation or you can call my phone number. I'd love to work with you. And I am very, very optimistic about fourth quarter and peak 2023. Regardless of all of the baloney that's going on in this country right now, I believe that we are going to see a change of policies uh, coming in with this midterm election. Not trying to play politics here. I think we could honestly say that this sense of policies is not working well. And I think we'll see a whole different change. And I think people will get their confidence back and they'll start spending money on indulgent products. Well, listen, you've been wonderful to listen to me. Thank you. And um, you need help? Give me a call. Talk to you soon.